Let the geek times roll. Let your orchids grow. Won't you let the geek times roll? <laughs> Welcome to the patio and a topic that I thought I would share, which may tickle some brain cells, hopefully provide some light bulb moments and hopefully be of interest. That was my pathetic attempt at trying to make the geek times roll match the good times roll. Either way, <laughs> I appreciate you clicking on this video. We won't know if this is actually of interest until you have watched the video and leave your thoughts in the comments because I would like to know what you think about hydathodes. There's possibly some thoughts you may have about them that I have not included in this video. And if you have ever considered hydathodes in your orchids and what are they good for, etc, etc, all that fun stuff, I really appreciate you being here and sharing your knowledge about hydathodes once I have shared mine. So, if you are so into thoads as I am, <laughs> I have more for you in the description of this video where I share information based on experience spanning several years about pneumothodes. We are so into thodes here. All right, <laughs> so hydathodes. Let's get a little bit more serious. These images set the tone. You may already know where we are headed, but I still hope you hear me out. Have you heard of the term gutation? I'm going to assume maybe not, but if you have and you are still willing to spend time here, let me thank you in advance. Enough of the build-up. Now, gutation is the process of secretion of water droplets from the pores of some vascular plants, often seen and appreciated by orchid growers. In layman's terms, it's called happy sap because it indicates that the plant is getting plenty of hydration. This is a good thing, but do not confuse these water droplets with dew droplets. If you see them during the day, then you will know that what you're looking at is not dew. The composition of the gutation liquid comprises of a variety of inorganic and organic compounds, which mainly include potassium and sugars. When the moisture evaporates, a white crust remains on the leaf, often confused with a pest infestation, as it can give the appearance of mealybugs or even scale. Gutation does not appear through the stomata. Instead, it takes place through the hydathodes. In orchids, it takes place when the stomata are closed sometimes. That's me referring to the stomata being closed and not the hydathodes. Now that we have heard hydathodes used in conjunction with gutation, what are they? And let's delve a little bit deeper into what purpose do they serve? Hydathodes also sometimes referred to as water stomata. They maintain a similar structure to stomata in that they are porous. However, they are distinctly different because unlike stomata, hydathodes cannot actually open or close. Hydathodes remain open at all times, as small as the opening may be. The main role of a hydathode is to simply allow water to escape from the plant via secretion, since the hydathodes remain in a constant near sealed state, even though I just mentioned that they are open all the time, but the opening being a very, very small opening, in essence, so to speak. And then as excess water accumulates under the hydathodes, pressure builds up and water is secreted out of the different structures of the orchid, usually the leaf tips and sometimes along the underside of the leaves as well. But you will see hydathodes in action, or the result thereof, on new growths and spikes and other juicy things that our orchids grow when they are freshly growing. So, as hydathodes are open all the time, when and under what circumstances do they secrete water? I'm so glad you asked, and I'm going to tell you. But it would be so awesome if you could give this video a thumbs up, thus giving it a chance to get into the algorithm. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do. It really supports the orchids here in southern Spain, and I thank you so much for this support. Maybe for a trifecta, a super thanks, that would be amazing. That really helps the orchids out as well. So the hydrothodes do their thing under conditions in which the roots of the plants, all plants, but in our case orchids, when the roots are provided with consistent access to water and the humidity is high. The combination of those two moisture influences being very generous and readily available makes the root systems absorb excess water. As a result, a hydrostatic pressure develops in the roots that force the water upwards. 
Hence, the water involving other soluble cell components is forced out of the xylem present in the epithelial tissue, which can also result in stomata being filled with water, then also pushing the water out because of the root pressure. But we'll get to that. But sticking with hydathodes, the liquid is forced out of the pores where the stomata and the hydathodes, you know, the water glands, where they offer no resistance. However, remember that stomata have the opening and closing capability, while hydathodes do not. They are open all the time. Orchids that are not in active growth get watered less. For that reason, you may have some orchids showing happy sap and others that do not. There are also orchids that are more inclined to secrete the happy sap, while others don't, even when those orchids have sufficient access to moisture. So do not fall into the trap of watering orchids more to get them to produce happy sap, and with that, put the health of your orchid at risk. Anyway, as a result, the root pressure forces the water to exude from the leaf tips and stomata or hydathodes, and if you see that, it is the hydathodes that will show the water droplets. Now, we have added stomata into the mix when it comes to excess water finding its way out of the structures. I want to distinguish the difference between the water that comes from the stomata and that of the hydathodes. If you would like to take a screenshot of the card I am inserting here, please wait until all the details have filled out. The different function for hydathodes and stomata is, hydathodes allow for the process of gutation, where a stomata facilitate transpiration. Now, some orchids open their stomata at night, while others do so during the day. So, gutation occurs at night, while transpiration occurs during the day, as well as the night, depending on the genus we're talking about. Water that is lost in gutation is rich in minerals, while the transpired water is pure. In gutation, water is lost as a liquid, as opposed to the water lost from transpiration, which is lost in form of vapors. And in the cases of genera that open their stomata at night, if you were to see the water droplets in your structures, you will know it is a result of gutation because the liquid stays behind, whereas any water lost from transpiration will evaporate before you see it. The gutation process takes place through hydathodes and stomata facilitate the process of transpiration. And lastly, gutation is also an uncontrolled phenomenon, but transpiration is a controlled and regulated phenomenon, controlled and regulated by the orchid. In summary, transpiration is not the same as gutation. Transpiration is the process of water moving through the plant and then evaporating through the stomata. It also helps with moving nutrients from roots to structures, and it helps with the temperature regulation through evaporative cooling. Again, the result of the transpiration process cannot be seen with the naked eye because the water expelled evaporates. Gutation, on the other hand, is when the roots are absorbing water, but the orchid isn't transpiring all that added moisture fast enough, so you get pressure inside the plant. Remember again, it can happen when humidity is too high or when the stomata are closed. The water from gutation is also loaded with nutrients and sugars. It is exuded through the hydrothodes and accumulates as visible, sticky, clear beads of moisture at the tips and edges of leaves, as well as any new growths of any kind, including spikes. I have been using the common reference to this liquid we know as happy sap. But if you want to call happy sap for what it is, not in layman's terms, Terms, as I have been mentioning all the time, the proper term is xylem sap. And the beauty of these gorgeous beads that you can see sometimes sparkling in the sunshine, they are delicious. So if you have never tried xylem sap, it is not toxic, it is sweet, very sugary, very sticky. Give it a go. You won't be disappointed if you are a sweet tooth like I am. <laughs> Anyway, both gutation and transpiration are super important functions to keep your orchids healthy. Stomata are there for your plants to breathe by way of transpiration. Hydathodes are there to facilitate gutation, which is important to the health of the plant as well. Both functions ensure a means for excess water to be removed when the stomata are not open and transpiration does not occur. Let's just say if your orchids did not have hydathodes, any excess of water or xylem sap in the plant's vascular system could mean 
mean that the nutrients and minerals would be removed without their full use being expended. Also, without hydathodes, the excess liquid would have nowhere to go during a time of day or night when the stomata are closed, which would result in the orchid or houseplant, for example, drowning within itself. And that visual will present itself as though the structures, leaves, etc. are wilting, but not from lack of water, instead from excess water. Phew, are you still here? Any questions? Or again, any of your personal take on the topic of this video? Perhaps you have something you would like to bring to my attention that is not related to this video? Please do not hesitate to use the comment section to your advantage. I look forward to hanging out with you there. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and for watching to the end because it gives me the opportunity to wish you a fabulous day. On the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.